GIS fans, welcome back to Lightning GIS. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on buffers and how you can go about creating them. Um, first of all, what is a buffer? Well, a buffer is a zone around a map feature. It can be a zone around points, lines, or polygons in GIS. Um, and here we've got a diagram from Esri's help site that shows some circular buffers around a point and some lines. It's part of the proximity tool set um, and you should note that some of the features, especially the more advanced features we'll be using today, are limited based on the type of license you have for ArcGIS. Alright, first let's imagine that we have um, a data set. In this case we've got three different points in a file. Our attribute table is very simple, just some point names. We want to add some buffers around those. The simplest type of buffer would be to just set a generic buffer size, in this case two meters, so all our buffers would be equal. Um, we don't need to add anything to the attribute table to do this and we can do it really quickly. Let's go over to ArcMap and uh, take a look at how to do that. All right, let's make those simple buffers. To do this, we need to go to Arc Toolbox, find the Proximity Tool Set, and you'll find Buffer right there at the top. Um, open up the uh, Geoprocessing dialog box for the buffer. Um, first, we need to put the input, the input features in. This is the shapefile or feature class that um, has the points, lines, or polygons around which we want to create the buffer. Um, you need to give the resulting output file, which will be another uh, shapefile or feature class, a name. Uh, I'm going to give it one that makes sense to me. Then here's where we can define the diameter of our buffer. Let's just put in two, double check that our units are meters here. So that's going to create a two meter buffer for us. We'll hit OK. Usually it just takes a quick second to produce those buffers. We can drag that new layer down and you can see that the uh, point file that we buffered, uh, those uh, points come up right in the center of our new buffers. I'll just note real quickly, you can, since this is a shape file, you can um, make those hollow and maybe a dashed line around. I, I did an earlier version of this just to show you quickly um, what maybe a different way to display these would be. Alright, so that's how you make a simple buffer. Alright. Um, now that we've done simple buffers, let's step it up just a notch in uh, sophistication. We can also size the diameter of those circular buffers based on an attribute in an attribute table. So here we have an attribute table with our point names and an error. Maybe these are GPS points and this is the error associated with the GPS point and so the buffer then would represent um, our um, circle of uncertainty within which that GPS point lies. Um, this is relatively easy to do in GIS also, so let's go over to ArcMap and take a look at how to do that. Alright, let's create a buffer based on an attribute. Um, to do this, we need to open up the attribute table for the uh, feature class or shapefile that we want to create the buffer for. In this case, we have a lateral RM field within that attribute table that represents an error associated with the point. We want to use that error value, which is in meters here, um, to define the size of the buffer that we're going to create. So let's close that attribute table, come to Arc Toolbox, we'll open the buffer tool. Um, just like for the simple buffer, we need to uh, define our input features. We need to give a name for our output feature class. And then instead of using the linear unit field, we're going to use the field option to um, define our buffer size. From that field option we can open up the drop down menu and here are the attributes from our attribute table for the input shapefile. We'll choose that lateral RM field. We'll hit OK. And in just a second we have our buffers here. So here you can see that each point now has a uniquely sized buffer based on that attribute in the attribute table. Alright, uh, let's go to our most sophisticated buffer type, at least that we're going to cover in this video, um, that's an elliptical buffer. In this case, we can specify a different diameter for a major axis and a minor axis. Now note that the major axis and the minor axis have to be perpendicular, at least um, using the technique I'm going to demonstrate today. Um, and a good example of where you might use this is if you had GPS data where you knew that the air associated with the northing and the air associated with the easting, uh, that they were different. You wanted to specify those. Um, here you need a little more complicated 
uh, attribute table. You're going to need um, X and Y data, so in this case a latitude and a longitude. You're going to need your um, error that's associated with both of those axes. And then you can also specify the azimuth of that major axis. So here we're going to call our our latitude the major axis and even though this doesn't quite make sense if you really know about GIS GPS data um, it's, it's useful to demonstrate that if we set that azimuth to something like 135 then it rotates the major axis of the air ellipse or whatever type of elliptical buffer we're trying to create and in the process of creating these elliptical buffers if you need a circular one no problem just set the major and minor axes to the same um, diameter and you'll get a circular buffer like we show here in number three. All right, with that, let's go over to GIS and take a look at how to create these elliptical buffers. All right, let's create some elliptical buffers. To do this, we're going to use the table to ellipse tool. Um, before we start that, I just want to explain what some of the attributes are that we're going to need to tell GIS in order to do this um, elliptical buffer creation. So first we need an X and Y coordinate for each point. So that's what's shown here as the center of our X and Y coordinates for a point. And then we have a major axis, that's the air along um, a major axis and an air along a minor axis. Now the orientation of that major axis is defined by some azimuth that's measured from 0 degrees, which is north, um, through 359 degrees. So 90 degrees would be east, 180 degrees south, and so forth. Alright, so that's how the tool works. Now to do this in GIS, we need to have um, all that, all those values, all those attributes in a table. So I've I've created a table, imported it to GIS. I've got a longitude, that'll be my X coordinate. A latitude, that'll be my Y coordinate. Um, I've got uh, air value associated with my longitude. Um, in this case, in this case, it's a northing. I've got an air value associated with my latitude. In this case, that's an easting. And then my azimuths, because my air values for longitude, my major axis are all north. I've just set all those azimuths to zero. But you could set each one uh, uniquely depending on your data set. You could have each one of those values could have a different orientation, a different azimuth. All right. So let's close that to find the. Uh, table to ellipse tool you need to open up the data management toolbox go to the features sub sub tool set and then you'll find the table to ellipse tool we'll open that up uh, we need to uh, tell ArcMap what that input table is that we just had open a few moments ago we need to provide a name for the output data file that we're going to create the output shape file with the error ellipses um, we need to tell it which field is our X field. So for us, that's our longitude. Um, our Y field is our latitude. Our major air axis will be the longitudinal air. Our minor air axis will be the latitudinal air. Um, the distance units for our airs are listed in meters. Our azimuth field will be that longitudinal air azimuth. They're in degrees, um, and that's pretty much what we have to input. All right, let's hit OK. The table to ellipse tool has completed running, and we have our elliptical buffers feature class um, that's been added to our map. And you can see that each, uh, each point now has an elliptical buffer around it. So, success. All right, I hope this quick tutorial on how to create three different types of buffers was useful to you. And uh, if it was, I hope you'll check out our other Lightning GIS videos for more help on doing GIS lightning fast.